Hello everyone, my name is uh, Karol Marek Pimczak and I'd like to share some thoughts today on how to structure your essays in economics and management. I'm recording this at uh, Laos University of Technology in my office where actually I spend a lot of time writing and reading. Now, just a few things to get started. First, the point of economics is to understand why economies change the way they do. Okay, this is what we do. Now, this means that when you make an argument in your essay, you should use economic analysis to study any phenomenon that you like. It doesn't have to be strictly economic, but you have to use economic analysis, and you should be clear about what types of economic concepts you use, and use economic evidence to support it. This means evidence that uh, talks to uh, how things happen, or observations of economic transactions, and not, for example, what people think or what people write. Okay, and that's not a typical economic problem. Now, having said that, there is one more economic problem, which is economists are really keen on explaining causality because we're bad at it. Meaning, we can, for example, show that when uh, government spending increases, consumption increases, but we're not really clear about whether it is the spending that increased consumption or consumption increased um, the uh, spending. So, it is important to have the theory, the model, that shows exactly how the causality flows, from where to where, because otherwise that will be complicated. Now, your introduction is the place where you will point the reader to what, towards what to expect in your essay. We don't like surprises in economics, don't hide everything or anything, just make it clear uh, what your paper is about. Explain what it is about how this thing happens, when it happens, where it happens, who is involved, and why, of course, these things takes place. State your aim clearly, preferably in a separate paragraph, it can be a short paragraph that speaks specifically to what you want to do. And in the introduction, identify the key literature that you build on. Now, I'll give you an example of a good essay. It's a short one, something like uh, 10 pages, uh, published in 2005 in Ecological Economics by a sociologist, Julie B. Shore. And so she tries here to write a paper for economists, the way economists um, read and write. So what does she do? Um, in the introduction, she starts with an established opinion, established in economic literature, and that opinion is that um, current consumption levels and growth are unsustainable. So that's the very first sentence. She provides a number of references where economists say that is actually a fact. Then, in sentence three, she uh, brings up statistics that confirm this and statistics published by reputable um, institutions. And only then does she start the rhetorical discussion as to uh, what her specific point is. When you look into the details of her argument further on, she makes another uh, nice sort of stylistic approach which is, uh, she first talked about what the literature mostly deals with, which is technological solutions to environmental issues. And then, in the next paragraph, she says, by contrast, I argue that a purely technological approach will fail. And then she says, why? Okay, so this is, again, nice, where she starts with something pretty well established, things that people are aware of and familiar with, and then she says, but I am actually trying to do this. Okay, so there is common ground, common understanding as to her point of departure. It's a good idea um, in the introduction. So literature is important, and your essays will usually have a literature review section where you should use references for basically two reasons. One, to position your uh, writing. So when I read your paper, uh, which other literature should I think about? What's your connections to other literature? I have read a lot, so I know people have different opinions. So which, which, which kind of opinions do you side with? And then you can also use references to support your argument, especially well-cited paper where people have already done some analysis, and this kind of saves you time as the writer and me as a reader. There are things that are just kind of approved already and pretty credible. You can borrow this credibility, build on it in your essay. So if you look at the main body then, the main body is where, of course, you go to some length to show the details of your um, essay, of your argument. 
and uh, it should be as short as possible, but then again, of course, there are things you will have to include. Now let's look at what happens in this example paper. So it starts with a case of um, clothing industry uh, that has seen prices go down. As a result, people buy more clothes, and these clothes obviously waste the environment. So then she says, okay, but that's just clothes. Um, so let's talk about in section three about other prices, other goods. And so she shows a table, some data about more broad economic categories. And then in uh, section four, she talks about the environmental impact of what is happening. Now to kind of close her argument, she brings up another case, the case of bananas and how um, cheap banana production destroys the environment. And then finally she closes uh, the whole thing with conclusions as to what we should do, what would be sustainable economics, what would sustainable politics be. All along she uses um, references, and here is an example of using references to establish facts. So in the first case, the fact is that low apparel prices are possible because there is a shift towards offshore production. And so she provides references um, on, uh, on that point without going into a lot of detail. So this kind of saves time. And then uh, she also cites some data that basically all clothing comes from offshore uh, production. And for that data, she quotes the source. So if you're reading this, you're saying, uh huh, okay, so if I really want to delve into this, maybe, because maybe it's not true, but I should start checking by going into those references, and she provides quite a lot, so uh, I know where to go. But you can also say, okay, I actually trust these sources, and yeah, we don't need to talk about it right now. I think it's a pretty well established fact. Let's just move on and, and think about the conclusions. Another way to uh, deal with references is to use references to support some general statements that otherwise would be rather difficult to support. So, for example, here she says that as environmentalists have long recognized, sustainability will also require more sophisticated property relations than the current private property model allows. Okay, so who are environmentalists? Is it people that, you know, hug trees or who? Well, it's Ostrom and Bartha Sarathi, for example. Now, what does it mean they have long recognized um, since, like, when? Aristotle? Uh, well, no, she actually means, like, from the 90s and the 2000s, people are writing about it. So it's, like, pretty well established again. So without these references, this would be an unsupported statement that should normally be kicked out from the essay. But if you put the references, you can actually keep it in there and say, yeah, there are people who have written um, about uh, the types of uh, property models that we have. Now, the best kind of evidence, obviously, is data. So when you have data, nobody asks questions, okay, but it should be good data. So don't use a lot of sources. Use one or maybe two sources, but be sure you know your data. Um, it should be credible, right? You should be able to explain that data and its usefulness, so where it comes from, what are its characteristics. You should know its strengths and weaknesses, and you should state this in the data um, a section. I will, I will show an example later. And you should explain any adjustments that you made. So, for example, you deflated the data. How did you do that? Okay. Now, here is an example of a table. Tables are very good if you like tables in economics. So it should be clear. Everybody should be able to understand them. I mean, <laughs> any economist. So here is an example from that paper where it shows um, the inventories in stores. It shows uh, the different kinds of products like apparel, toys, and so on and so on. Okay, and it talks about the uh, prices and what's been happening to price and basically shows that those prices keep decreasing and as a result people consume more. That's pretty convincing. Now, the next thing you will need in your uh, paper is a model and results. Okay, just to be clear on this, when I say model, I mean something connecting the data and the theory. So a model does not necessarily need to be equations, although that's good. It could also be a diagram, a flowchart, something that speak specifically as to what you expect to see in your um, data. Your results then are kind of technical because they basically show the results of applying data to your model. Okay, so there should be obviously some graphs and tables showing the result, but these are just results. Now, then when you connect those results to the introduction, so to the question that you ask, then you reach your conclusions. So what have you learned? How you contribute to what people have done before you? and how this can be used further. That's the conclusion. So that's not the same thing as results. Results are technical. Conclusions are where we draw something further from the results. 
Here is an example from a paper by Kenneth Arrow and some other people from 1995, uh, which deals with a funny issue in economic literature. There was actually research showing that um, higher economic growth results in better environmental outcomes, which makes absolutely no sense, right? And so what they say is, well, they don't just say it doesn't make sense. What they say is that this relationship that people have been showing is a result of the wrong interpretation of data. So they say it's important to be clear about the conclusion that you can actually draw from this kind of data. What they say is, yes, uh, economic growth reduces some types of pollution. That's a fact. But this pollution accumulates over a long period of time. Probably the overall impact on the environment is much bigger in a growth, uh, high growth economies than in uh, developing economies. And then this fact basically is not connected in any way with the theory, or I don't know if it's a theory, it's more of another fact, just the world is round, okay, and there's a limited amount of resources. So here we have a fact that is not connected to the theory, and this is the connection that is missing. Now if you think about the model, you could have two models here. So you have a factory, and you have the uh, pollution that is being spilled out of the factory. Well, that's a very simple model. If the factory is bigger, more modern, then it probably pollutes less. Fine. But let's look at a more complex model. The factory is, you know, built somewhere in the country, you know, in the world, so there is the globe, right? The earth, and the factory is built there, and this factory draws resources, various kinds of resources from its surroundings. So that has an impact on the environment. Then it pollutes. And yes, maybe it pollutes less today, but because it's bigger, because it's more modern, because it draws resources from a bigger area, probably the overall impact is bigger, even if today it pollutes less. Okay? So different models give you different conclusions. This is why your model is important. So let's talk about the final touches. Write your paper, right? Once you've written it, edit it so that it can be read. All right? So take Think to change the hat from the writer to the reader and edit the paper. Now then proof that paper and make sure that there is no errors in the paper. This also means look at your references. This is important. Okay, so uh, you can use Crossref um, to make sure that your references are correct, correctly formatted in APA, uh, provide the DOI number uh, to uh, identify each um, each paper that you reference. Make sure that all the references from the text are in the list and all the references in the list are in the text. Okay, so there is nothing sort of hanging free. And finally, format the papers. It looks good. That's important. And while formatting, it's good to put your graphs and tables at the end of the paper. So reference in them in the text, but don't stick them inside the text. Put them at the very end. Now here are two examples of exercises you could try. The first one is, um, Take an example of a paper, so like one of the two I talked about, and look closely at the argument. Try to outline the argument by changing each paragraph into one sentence and see how the argument builds. Okay? These are people who really know how to write, so it's good to learn from them. Also, identify the key literature that they build on and the literature they use as evidence. So that specifically means the kind of literature they reference many times, not just once. What are the concepts? What are the theories that they use? Can you identify those? That's a good exercise. What's the core argument? Like if you were to explain this paper to a friend over a coffee, um, what would it be? And then finally, what is the evidence? I mean, at the end of the day, what is the evidence that they've got for this? Okay. So that's a good exercise while reading a paper. And reading is important. Now, you, looking at your paper, what you can do with your paper is uh, take each paragraph and change it into one sentence and see how the argument flows. If it flows good on the paragraph level, meaning each paragraph is one sentence, that probably means the whole paper will read well. Of course, you know, there are cycles here, so you go back and forth, back and forth, trying to improve your paper. The more time you will spend on writing your paper, the better the paper will be. Okay, so when I write a paper, quite often it takes two or three years to write a paper, okay? So if you spend more than one night doing it, that's probably a good investment. Good luck.